Welcome to the Respiratory System Lab. In this lab, we will cover the basics of the human respiratory system. The respiratory system is divided into two major divisions, the upper respiratory and the lower respiratory. Found in the upper are the sinuses. Examples shown here would be the sphenoidal and frontal sinuses. The nasal cavity, which has the special bones known as nasal conchae the nose, and the pharynx. The lower respiratory is made up of the larynx, trachea, bronchus, and bronchioles of the right and left lungs. Also identified in the diagram is the most important muscle of breathing, your diaphragm. The bronchi branch and branch into tiny tubules known as bronchioles, which lead into the microscopic air sacs of the lung, the alveoli. Pulmonary arteries transport deoxygenated blood to the lungs from the heart, and pulmonary veins transport oxygenated blood from the lungs back to your heart. Capillaries run alongside the walls of the alveoli. Diagrammed here is the exchange of gases, oxygen and carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is unloaded out of the blood at the alveolus and oxygen is loaded into the blood capillary. The alveolar wall and the blood capillary make up the respiratory membrane through which these gases diffuse across. Again, requirements that must be met for a respiratory membrane to allow for the exchange of these gases are that it must be moist and thin. Let's take a look at some models of the respiratory system. The upper and part of the lower respiratory systems are shown here. The superior, middle, an inferior nasal concave of the nasal cavity. The nasal concave are scroll-shaped bones which are covered with mucous membranes. When breathing through the nose, the inhaled air is conditioned in your nasal cavity because the air is swirled around the concave. This allows for filtering of particulate matter, moistening and warming of the air. The air now makes its way through the pharynx into the larynx and now it's on its way down your trachea. Here's another model where we view the trachea. The trachea is supported by cartilaginous C-shaped rings. As you see in the inset picture to the upper left, the cartilage rings are not complete. The trachea branches into the left bronchus and the right bronchus. The bronchi within the lungs, branches and branches, as you see in the inset picture to the lower left. The bronchial tree is made up of the primary bronchi that branches into secondary bronchi and they branch further into tertiary bronchi. Here in the lung, the, the model depicts the tremendous branching of the primary, secondary, and tertiary bronchial tubes. In this model, let's take a look at the posterior view of the larynx. The glottis is the opening within the larynx through which air travels. In the event of swallowing, you would not want food to pass down into the glottis or choking would ensue. Therefore, when you swallow a trap door known as your epiglottis, made up of elastic cartilage, closes over the glottis, thus preventing food from entering. The food will continue to pass down into your esophagus instead of down the larynx into your trachea. Your right lung is made of three lobes, the superior, middle, and inferior. Your left lung is made up of two, the superior and the inferior lobes. The heart lies medial or between the lungs and again its function is to pump the deoxygenated blood to the lungs 
to unload carbon dioxide gas and then it receives the oxygenated blood returning from the lungs. The heart will then pump this oxygenated blood to your body. Here's a nice graphic of the trachea branching into the right and left bronchi and the continuing of the branching of the bronchial tree to the tiniest tubes, the bronchioles, which lead air into the microscopic air sacs, the alveoli. Pulmonary arteries again transport deoxygenated blood to the lungs and pulmonary veins transport oxygenated blood back to the heart. Once again, because it is most important to understand, oxygen diffuses out of the alveolus across the respiratory membrane into the blood. Carbon dioxide diffuses in the opposite direction, out of the blood, into the alveolus. Mechanics of breathing. We now need to discuss how the oxygen makes its way into the lungs, inhalation, and how carbon dioxide makes its way out of the lungs, expiration. Let's take a look at structures that are important in the mechanics of breathing. Your lungs are protected by the rib bones, which together make up part of the thoracic cage. The contraction of the external and internal intercostal muscles cause the ribs to be lifted up and out. These are the external intercostal muscles that do this. Or your ribs can be drawn down and inward the muscles controlling this would be the internal intercostal muscles. Your abdominal muscles will also come into play to push up into the lungs. Take a look at this model with part of the thoracic cage removed to see how the lungs rest within. Again, the external and internal intercostal muscles will control the movements of the rib cage and the most important muscle for breathing is your diaphragm. Why are movements of the rib cage up and outward and contraction of the diaphragm impor important to the mechanics of breathing? It relates to Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law explains how air moves in and out of our lungs. Gases will move from a higher area of pressure to a lower area of pressure. The pressure of a gas depends on the volume of the container holding the gas. If the volume is increased, the pressure of the gas inside will decrease. Thus, if the volume decreases, the pressure of the gas will increase. When you inhale, the external intercostal muscles contract lifting the ribs up and out and the diaphragm contracts downward. This increases the volume of the lungs which therefore decreases the gas pressure inside. The air pressure inside the lungs is now lower than the atmospheric pressure outside of your body. This creates a suction and you draw air into the lungs. You inhale or inhalation. When you exhale, the external intercostal muscles relax and the ribs fall back down and inward. The diaphragm relaxes and pushes upward. This decreases the volume of the lungs, which therefore increases the gas pressure inside. The air pressure inside the lungs is now higher than atmospheric pressure outside your body. This is like squeezing on a balloon, forcing air out. You exhale, or expiration. For a forced expiration, like you would experience with a cough, the internal intercostal muscles would contract and pull the ribs down and inward, and your abdominal muscles would contract, pushing upwards on the diaphragm thus causing the volume of the lungs to decrease even more and gas pressure would increase even more, causing a forced expiration. Have you ever had a bad cough? 
and it caused your abdominal muscles to ache? Remember Boyle's Law. If volume of the container holding the gas increases, the gas pressure decreases. You would inhale. If the volume decreases, pressure of the gas increases. You exhale.